All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, today, we are going to spend a little bit of time walking through our um, client support portal. And this is a tool that we are rolling out to help you and your staff engage in a more um, productive, proactive, you know, seamless manner with our team. And every time we are, you know, meeting with, with clients, uh, we like to just throw this up here. This is what we call our brand commitment. It's our promise to you. And we believe that if you get an opportunity to read through it, it will really touch on the points that make working with tier three IT unique. Um, the things that I, I'd like to point out is that we very much are interested in building relationship with, with you and your staff and making technology, not just a, uh, a tech support issue, but you know something that's helping you um, run a better business, um, becoming more profitable and more efficient and protecting you through you know, the ever-changing cybersecurity landscape. The very last sentence is what we talk about internally all the time is that, you know, we're not the world's best, you know, tech support or the whatever. We are, we do technology to help build stronger businesses. And that is going to change and evolve, you know, over the years. Um, but that is why we're here. And so when we talk about, you know, our core beliefs as an organization, um, you know, we're focusing on this idea that technology is supporting you in achieving your business goals overcoming business challenges, and no two strategies, no two businesses are the same. So today, um, we've got our agenda. We're, we're going to start off just talking about where to find this portal, how to log in. We're going to talk a little bit about the differences in permissions and, and what you get out of it. And then we'll go through the different components of the portal, and we'll wrap up with the Q&A. Now, there are um, this particular session today, it is primarily focused at the typical end user. Um, so we'll talk about what that looks like. So um, the first thing is where to find the portal. Many of you on your desktop will have a shortcut that looks like this. It will say support portal, tier three IT solutions. Um, when you see that, you can double click on it and it will um, launch the login page if you haven't already logged in. The other option that you have is you can open a web browser and simply type portal.tier3it.ca. Again, it will take you to a login page um, that looks like this. The third option, and this is not necessarily available at every client yet, but it will um, become our likely our standard for anybody that uses Microsoft Teams is if you're familiar with Microsoft Teams, um, over on the left-hand side here, we have the option to um, integrate it right into Microsoft Teams so that, you know, as you're going about your day and you're, you know, flipping through all of the things that you have, you can access the portal right from there. The great thing about using it in Microsoft Teams is that Microsoft Teams is already authenticated to Microsoft 365. So it knows who you are and it makes the login um, process much more seamless. So going back to the typical login, you would see this if you were opening it from the link on your desktop or from that portal.tier3it.ca link. You'll notice that there are two options for the login. The first one is to log in using your Microsoft Work account. And to do this, if you click on that, it's going to ask you for your Microsoft 365 username and password. And hopefully we've got two-factor enabled on your account and it will ask for that. My personal preference is to use the email link. And the reason I like this one is that all you do is you type in your email address, you, you click get login token. What it does is it verifies with our portal that you are indeed a registered legitimate user, and it will then send you an email that, let me get it on the proper screen here, looks a little something like this. Yours might be in white instead, um, and it'll give you this login token. So by copying and pasting that login token in here, 
it then authenticates because it now knows that I have control over that email address. And so therefore I have the rights to access um, the portal. I like it because this way we don't need to, um, you know, enter a, another username and password. When you log in, um, the first thing that you're going to see is you're going to land on the home page. And I'm just going to slide a couple of these windows out of the way and show you the difference between an administrator on the left. We see this entire list. You obviously will not have the one called partner. That is you know, for us. Or if you are a standard end user, you would see uh, a, a more limited menu here. The important thing here is that the main items that most people will use to engage with us are help desk support, change requests and orders, and active support tickets. And so we'll go through these um, one at a time and just explain what they are. So help desk support is a way that you can submit a support request. The idea with it is that um, it's we, we, can build, we can build out different forms and workflows to help you provide more relevant information to our technicians and eventually to reciprocate to you immediately with tips and tricks and ways you might be able to solve the problem yourself. You see the categories here. When you click and extend, extend the category, it then gives you subcategories. Now, these are the most common um, you know, types of um, requests that we would get from people. And depending on which one you choose, we're going to get a slide in from the right, which will then ask the questions that are relevant. You know, and part of the, the challenge of tech support is that you, as a computer user, run into a problem on your computer and you want to get it fixed as quickly as possible. And, you know, you might send an email that says, you know, my, my monitor is not working anymore. And our technician then sees that and has to come back and say, okay, what computer are you using? Do you have a docking station? What monitor is it? What do you mean not working? Um, and so as we start building out these forms, we can see that the level of information that we get out of um, these forms answers a large number of those questions that we normally would have to bounce back and forth to help people solve a little bit um, easier. When you submit one of these tickets, it goes into our ticketing system, and then everything in the ticketing system happens the same way in terms of you know, the technicians responding and adding notes and, and all those types of things. I'm going to skip past change orders and re change requests and orders. We'll come back to that after, because I think it's more relevant to um, then come and look at the active support tickets. Because the second most common, um, I guess, question that we get from people is, What's happening with my request? Now, in this particular um, tab, I'm logged in as Gary. Um, we'll see he has no open tickets, no closed, no, no waiting. That's because he is a end user. So not somebody who's part of the management or administration side of, of the client organization. So he would only see the tickets that he created. Whereas if we came into mine and I open my active support tickets, um, I will see, okay, we've got a couple of them here. We'll just flip past. Um, I will see tickets for all of our client organization or for all of the users in my, in my business. So if JP logged a ticket or Aaron logged a ticket, I would see it in the different statuses, open, closed, you know, waiting. When I'm in here, if I want to get more information about the status of a ticket, I can just simply take and click on it. It will slide in um, and I will be able to see, you know, the initial ticket um, creation, the comments that have gone back and forth. Um, there's some extra tabs here to look at it in a different chronological order. Uh, I can get details and I can look at the feedback that we'll talk about a little bit later. The other thing that um, the administrators get that the you know, regular users don't is 
um, these slide in menus from the right. And so in, in different areas of the portal, you can come in and you can say, I'd like to see how many tickets we've created by month. And you know, I can, I can then look and see trends. I could look and see you know, over the last 90 days, who on my team has submitted the most tickets. And I go, oh, okay, Aaron's put four in and you know, we've had 42 come from you know, other places. And I could also look at the ticket types. So are they software related? Are they you know, service? So that would be like internet provider. Are they hardware related? And so this is information that for the administrators will be available to you. For the regular users, um, they don't get to see those charts. All right. The last item that, that shows up on the default homepage is change requests and orders. Now, again, different, different organizations choose to handle these different ways, but these are, so the first one is support. So we need help fixing something that's not working. This is where you would go to modify, add, change, remove. And so, you know, at a first glance, um, you know, adding a user, removing a user, ordering new computers, setting up permissions. But this add a new user is the one that I always like to highlight because quite frankly, we get so many requests um, you know, from businesses that just says, can you set up an account for JP? He's starting next Tuesday. And our technician immediately has to get, get in touch and say, okay, sure, we can do that. Um, what is JP's last name? What is his title? You know, it, what is his level of permission? Where will he work? Does he need a computer? You know, all of those types of things. And it just slows down the process and, and quite frankly, makes it a little bit more frustrating for you um, and for us as we're fulfilling those requests. So when we click on that, we can see that this one actually splits into tabs. So the first one is just who the person is, what they're gonna be doing, contact information, start date. Then we get into, um, you know, is there somebody else in the organization that has the same level of permissions that we can just copy that profile? Um, any special notes, any, you know, um, requirements around, you know, certain levels of permissions and file access. And we'll start seeing here where the radio buttons are actually conditional. So if doesn't need an email account, nothing happens. If we say yes, then it asks what we want the email address to be. Because not every business uses the same naming convention. Um, some of them might want Jesse H at tier3it.ca. Others might want a position title. So general manager, food and beverage manager, you know, conveyancer, whatever that might be. And so, <clears throat> We can gather that information, you know, again, you know, if we need a new computer, have you completed the form? Um, no. Okay, I would finish and go and do that. Same type of concept for the other items. Um, so removing, ordering, you know, um, you know, removing is also, you know, very important about, you know, if it is a sensitive termination, um, our recommendation is to phone to set that up so that it doesn't um, you know, necessarily trigger uh, an email notice if it's somebody who's on your management team. And that covers the homepage. Now, those three items are also found in the left under support, and you can get to them that way. The next thing I wanna to touch on, because I think it's um, probably going to be the most interesting and most valuable component of this entire portal in the coming years, is under university. I'm gonna start with quick starts. Now, when we come in here, initially we see 10 tiles here, but over on the right, we can click on the all filter and we'll notice that it will extend and it will fill in and now we have 26 of them. Now, this is content that's provided um, in the portal. Um, you know, we, we subscribe to this software platform, this portal. These have been provided, you know, with that. And so we extend them to you. 
But what this is all about is saying, you know, if you want a quick overview of how to make Outlook work for you, you can click on that tile. And it's essentially a document that has been put together that in a very quick and easy way is going to show you and your team um, how to navigate through um, Outlook, you know, what the, what the different icons might mean, how to, you know, do different things, how to attach and all that. You can flip through it through the previous and next up at the top. You can also click to download it and it will put it into a PDF um, for you that you can look at that way. <laughs> I've never noticed that it was like in Latin or something. Presentacion di PowerPoint. Um, so a bunch of different ones focused on um, the Microsoft suite of products. The other thing that, that we were really excited about is the courses component. Now, same deal when you come in, um, it looks like this one is defaulted to show you 11 courses or probably in your case, 10. You can come over to the right, they're categorized here, click all and it will show you all of them. Now, these courses again are provided to you at you know, no charge as part of the, the portal. Um, and you can see that a number of them are focused heavily on the Microsoft um, suite of products. So this one here, Mastering Excel, um, I've registered for it in the past. Um, I can click on it. it. It obviously gives me an overview of what it's all about, a little bit of what it's going to cover. And if I wanted to jump into the course, I just click on start the course and we will see the content load. Um, some of the courses are um, based on you know, content that you would read. Um, these ones are video based. Um, and I'm not, not seeing it here. Let me, oh, not that one. I'm just going to pull it up in the Teams one and see if it's a little snappier. So 2019, so I would enroll. Oh, you got to love live tech demos. One of these is going to load. Might not be that one. Okay, I will share a recording with all of you <laughs> later of a previous session that shows this. Um, what typically happens is we get some content in here. We get a drop down that you know shows us the different courses that are available or the different segments of the course. We can jump through, and these courses have a a ton of content in them. So if you have any questions about how to you know, use and leverage um, Microsoft Excel, um, these are great places or Word or Outlook or any of them, you can hop in here and get that. The other one that's included in here right now um, is Cybersecurity 101. Again, this is a course that is um, provided uh, through the portal. We are in the process of developing our own content for it as well that we will be providing in here. But you can see that this one is, is a little bit more text-based. You know, there was, there was content to read. And then it's actually asking me, you know, questions. And depending how I answer those, I'm going to get a score. And it tells me that I need to have a 70% in order to pass and to get a certification. Now, for many of you, as you are, um, you know, developing your cybersecurity side of your business, you may get asked from your cyber insurance provider if you're providing cybersecurity training. Something like this will allow you to see which of your staff have completed the training, and you can. This one is set so that it, the certification expires every 12 months, so that you have to go back and redo it. The last thing I'm going to show you very quickly is um, company administrators also have the option to create their own courses. So 
we are moving our employee handbook and company policies into here as well. We're putting a 12 month expiration on it so that we know that every employee that we bring on has an opportunity to read all of the, the content um, and each piece of content will have an acknowledgement that they can say, yes, I've read and I understood it, or, you know, I have questions. And that way we, again, we have a log of who's done it and are able to um, keep track of that a little bit better. All right, and then the last thing that the typical end user will see <clears throat> is um, applications. Now, applications is, is very customizable. A lot of the content that's on here is you know, more demonstration-based, and so we wouldn't necessarily expect that this means a lot to you. Many clients would not use um, these. And in fact, in your portal, most of them have been removed. However, we have some in here for you know, standard um, tech support tools. So if we're working with one of your staff and we need them to test their internet connection really quickly, we'll just have them come in here, click on that button, rather than trying to get them to type in you know, speedtest.net, because we know that as many times as we try to get people to type in it, um, it almost never translates over the phone. And then messages is just where we can broadcast um, items uh, you know, out, to, out to the team. So as a general end user, right, it's quick and it's streamlined and it's easy. Um, I'm going to just extend a little bit here. And if you, again, if you have any questions, put them into chat or Q&A and we, we can go into them in more detail. I'm just gonna cover very quickly what the administrators of an account would see that's different. So the first thing is, is this tab for infrastructure. And this is basically all of the technology that we are tracking or monitoring within your business. So endpoints would be computers, workstations, laptops, you know, those types of things. When we click on that, it just simply gives us a list. I can um, click on any of those devices. And again, I will get more detailed information about it. It'll tell me, you know, when the last update was done, which antivirus was on it, how much free space it has, um, you know, I can see that he's got um, his OneDrive, you know, activated using his company account. Um, if I get into the configuration, it will show me, you know, the approximate ship date that it left the, um, in this case, the Lenovo factory. I've got a serial number. Um, I can see how much RAM and processors and, and all of those types of things. And then even more detail about what software is installed you know, on this particular computer. Now, from a business planning perspective, one of the things that we really like is this planner option at the top. So if you knew that this computer was getting old or causing problems or underperforming, and you wanted to make sure that it was something we talked about in your, in your strategic plan, you can click on that planner button and say, I've got a productivity issue. And you'd fill in more detail, but this computer is old and should be replaced. Whew. And then I would hit submit and I'll show you where that goes in a moment. So you can do that for every device. You can take a look um, you know, and extend out the charts and it will show us options for how old it is, which antivirus, you know, which manufacturers are in there. You know, again, all of those you know, pieces of information that might be um, interesting to you. And um, yeah, there's also a map here that shows the IP address locations of, um, you know, systems that are, that are currently checking in. So we've got a couple guys out East and one in Canada and I'm actually waiting. We've got one, one of our staff overseas right now. So we will wait to see that soon. Um, Bob asking, do we need to worry about privacy issues with administrator rights? Um, well, Bob, I think the information that, that as an administrator that you're getting access to, I mean, you're really just seeing more diagnostic information than anything. I mean, you're not, 
Uh, I'm not sure if you have a specific concern or question on that. Um, I'll, I'll just keep moving. We, we can chat about that one if you want. Um, domains are, are you know, the, the domains that you have. Again, we can get all kinds of information out of, out of those. And then software. So this one is, uh, I think, very interesting because it gives us a list of all of the software that's in, installed on all of the computers. Now, you might run into a situation where you're you know, flipping through the news and there's an article that says, you know, businesses are losing millions of dollars a year because people are playing Minecraft at work. So you could come in here and you could, you know, type Minecraft and we would see if anybody has it installed on their computer. Or you might see an article that says, oh, there's a, a, a fatal flaw in Adobe Acrobat DC. Well, you probably want to know that. So you could take and you could um, type Adobe and it shows us that we have two computers and these are the computers that it's installed on. We then could respond um, with how we're going to address that. Under usage, um, when we look at licenses, um, this is going to show you um, out of your Microsoft 365 portal, um, what licenses you have purchased, how many are assigned, and ultimately who's using them. So I see that we have 25 licenses for Microsoft Power BI Pro. We've assigned two of them. And if I click on that, I can see that myself and JP are the ones that have been assigned that. So again, a, a bit of an auditing a review tool for yourself. Um, if you ever have questions about um, what licenses you, know, you have and who's consuming them. And then users is gonna show us um, the list of users within the organization. All right, compliance is a, is will be a big one down the road. Now, for any of our clients that um, have seen, you know, what we call our technology alignment managers coming on site, running regular assessments, this is the module that we're using. And what we do is we build out these templates and we say, we want to um, compare our client's technology status against the NIST um, standards. And we have built out this giant checklist of yes and no questions um, to help establish not just a baseline, but uh, a health status of your network. And so every question, um, you know, we have detail on the question, why it's important, what to do to fix it, should we add a ticket, should we add it to the planner? Um, and so this is more an internal thing that we use that will eventually um, be provided in, in forms of reports and, and those types of things. The training, um, it just simply shows us um, which training um, courses we have, who has enrolled in them, when they completed it. So if you had something that you, that you wanted to monitor and make sure that people were um, completing their training in a timely fashion, you can do that here. And then feedback. So this one is really important to us because feedback is every time we um, close a ticket for a client, they get that email that says they were great, they were just okay, or they were not good. Um, and that immediately goes to us in our Microsoft Teams. And of course, we want as many you know, greats as we can get. But any of the neutral or negatives, we actually reach out and we follow up with, with the person who gave them to us so that we can understand what happened. But if you are ever wondering what your staff think about working with us, you can go in as an administrator to the account to feedback and you can see what everybody has, has given for ratings on their tickets. You can also pull in the charts and you know, see the last 90 days. Um, if you want, you can, you can click on them and um, you know, see more detail, you know, ticket number, who worked on it, you know, all of those types of things. For anybody that's on the finance side, um, you'll have a link here where you can see invoices. 
Um, and probably the last one we'll touch on is this planner. And so this is designed as a tool to help you um, proactively plan your technology investments. So all of those items that we um, you know, flagged earlier on, they show up under the recommended. And so we could look at this, um, we click on it and it says, we need to upgrade this computer. Okay, pretty basic right now. But if we take and say, when do we wanna do that? Well, we wanna do that in, in the third quarter of this year. Once it gets put onto, onto this side of things, um, we now have the option to edit it and add a bunch more detail, um, including items like costs and subscriptions and those types of things. So we can see this one over here, um, you know, we just threw a $100 project on it. Um, it's a very simple, you know, planning um, and, and potentially budgeting tool that you can use for that. And we're already over time, so I don't want to keep you longer than we have. Um, so uh, that is a very quick rundown of, of the portal from both sides. I am happy to stick around for a couple minutes and answer any questions that anybody might have. I'm going to just stop the recording.